Have you ever wondered how people actually stick to their New Year's resolutions? 64% of us slip up within that first month alone. Today, we look at the systems high performers create to actually follow through on that resolution time and time again. Welcome to Forever Athlete Radio, where together we go far. This is episode 161 on finding daily purpose in what you do, reinventing yourself through goal-setting systems that will make you unstoppable, and how to dream bigger this new year. I'm your host, Corey Camp, former Division I swimmer, Forever Athlete founder, and your personal flow coach, helping you optimize your life one conversation at a time. We as humans, we get so hell-bent on this meaning of purpose, right? We run around trying to figure out what our purpose is on this blue ball just floating through space, and it can be downright overwhelming at times. As high achievers, seekers of all things growth, and constantly striving to better ourselves, it can be downright scary as well to really look up the mountaintop that is our goals and see ourselves so far from where we want to go. It's very easy to get discouraged in that process especially when we look at our daily habits, barely making a dent in the progress of where we want to be. That's why 64% of us don't actually keep that New Year's resolution within that first month alone. We're looking too big picture. Halfway through month one right now, and chances are pretty high that you and I, we've maybe slipped up once or twice on what we originally set out to do this year, and that's okay. That's why today I want to break down how exactly we work with clients to set goals that unlock their wildest dreams, unleashing a deep sense of purpose every single day in that process. But before we dive into it fully, I do want to take a second to talk about Connect With Your True Identity Daily. That's right. My first book is available right now for pre-order. And as we reinvent ourselves this new year, we're striving to find that true sense of self. This is this really all-in-one resource is meant to help you explore just that, giving you relatable tools, stories, and a support system to grow further than you would do just alone. That's right. There's this exclusive Forever Athlete community for everyone that pre-orders that book. Head on over to foreverathletela.com to get your hands on the book today. Remember, that's www.foreverathletela.com and start connecting with your life teammates today. Now, let's start with the hardest hitting question that I'm going to ask you today. What is your life purpose? And you might be thinking, Corey, you just said we get so hell bent on it. So why are we starting there? Well, I phrase it this way. How would you want to be in life when it's all said and done? How do you want to be is the key part there. I prefer to think of my life's work through this lens because it allows me to really identify how I can show up each day, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. I want you to grab a pen and paper, or maybe you're listening to this on the go and watching this on the go. Just use your notes app in your phone. Write down this headline, your life mission all up top. Your life mission is the purpose that you're after, after all. It's the why that Simon Sinek so famously talked about in his TED Talk, Start With Why. Your life mission is your North Star, and here's the catch to it. It actually shouldn't be attainable. That's right. There should be no way for you to get that mission accomplished. And let me explain that to you a little bit further here. Your mission isn't something that should be qualitative. There should be no number to it. That means it could be something that can be actually done every single day until the day that you die because you're not actually working towards a set number. Let me share mine as an example of this might help you out. My mission, whether it's through my personal life or through Forever Athlete, which is an extension of me, my mission is to help athletes, current and former, explore their true potential to flourish in all areas of their life, not just the playing field. I want to highlight another important thing when it comes to your life mission. It's okay for it to be fluid. Flow is fluid after all, right? It's not this rigid thing that confines us to this box. That's not what we're about here. When you're coming up with your life mission, it's natural to feel this resistance and maybe even stress around writing down the perfect mission for yourself. The mission you're currently on, it could look different than 5, 10, 20 years down the road, and that's okay. I don't want you to get caught up and bogged down in this part of the goal stacking process. The first mission that comes to mind that really lights you up is perfect for this moment. So let's just roll with it, okay? Next on our list is actually our vision, our life vision. This is how I want you to think about where or really what you want your life to look when it's all said and done. It's where we can get a little bit more tangible with the details here, maybe throwing some numbers and some metrics in there if you would like to. If your mission was to serve others, your vision would be how many people do you want to impact in your lifetime? What does that look like? It's tempting to say 1 million or maybe even 1 billion if you're really dreaming big and good for you if you do so. But maybe that is truly your mission. 
I would encourage you to dream as big as possible with this vision, because after all, you only live once. YOLO, that's the motto. That's what we're about every day, every day, as Drake would say, right? Shout out. Great song, by the way. Once you have a clear picture of what is in your life, who you want to be, and it's really time to then start reverse engineering this whole process down to who you are right now in this present moment in time. To do that, we're going to go through a few simple steps together. First, in three to five years, what needs to happen to get you closer to that life vision and mission? What does that look like? I want you to still be dreaming big here. Your life can look very drastically different today than in three to five years. Think back just three to five years before today. I'm sure you're in a much different spot than you were then, but you choose the direction that it's going from this point forward. I want you to be really aware of that fact. Think of this as an opportunity to set your GPS towards the destination where you want to go. Yes, three to five years, it can be a long time. There might be some road work, there might be some construction, or maybe even some car crashes along the way that come up along your route. That's okay. The beauty of having a GPS is that it helps us better navigate based off the feedback that is given to the system over time. It's exactly what we're setting up here today, your GPS, your navigation system to make sure that you are able to re-adjust, re-navigate when you need to and stay the course, get to the destination of where you want to go, no matter what happens along the way. It might take you a little bit longer than you originally set out, but that's okay. We all get to where we want to go eventually if we do this right. So what does that look like, right? This is really why the system works for the high performer. It's continually giving you feedback, that course correction in real time. It's not picking your head up and noticing, oh my God, I'm stuck on the 405 again when I could have taken another route. That's what we want to try to avoid, but that's what so many of us slip up on. Setting a yearly goal is what helps us to better start to navigate that North Star and getting a little bit closer to that life mission right? Or that three to five goal in this case. What is it that you truly want to do this year? I want to challenge you there. What is that thing? How is it in alignment with the goals that you've already set in listening and watching this episode? I would encourage you to diversify your goals on the yearly scale to really cover multiple areas of your life. You know we are all about holistic human identity here, right? So outside of work, what are your goals for maybe your family, your relationships, your physical health, your mental health, it's important to set goals in multiple areas there. Don't get overwhelmed here by setting goals in multiple areas. You'll find that they all end up being an expression of who you are as a human. And we can really work to find some different ways to explore how these goals might work in harmony for our life, rather than creating disruptive chaos that they so often do when we don't look at it that way. You can go maybe have a travel goal to get to Europe this year that works with a fitness goal of yours by signing up for a race of sorts that extending your trip on the back end would just make sense. And you can truly experience the culture of where you're traveling to and still check off that fitness box that you were checking. And you can maybe find quality time activities with your partner that also improve your mental health. It's not one or the other. It could be learning each other's love languages and speaking them frequently to one another and deepening the relationship that way. Two birds, one stone is the approach that I always love to take when we're talking about setting effective and efficient goals. Reducing the overwhelm a little bit further here, what needs to happen in Q1 for you to start moving the needle closer to those yearly goals that you just set? You don't have to do it all at once, right? But what sort of pace do you need to be on to make sure that these things are happening this year? And I want you to be mindful of the different kinds of growth here, okay? Think back to middle school geometry for a second. We're going to look at linear growth, exponential growth, and logarithmic growth. Shout out to all my math teachers listening and watching this. Sydney Prosser, I see you, girl. Remember what a linear line looks like? And if you don't, it's just straight. It's just a straight line. And unfortunately... That's how most of us think our growth is going to occur, no matter what the activity or experience may be. It's just a straight, straight line that just keeps on going and going and going until the end of time. That's not how most activities work, and that's not how our personal development and growth works. Very rarely is that the case. Some activities, yes, absolutely, that shows up, but it's not a universal rule across the board. Exponential growth, on the other hand, really takes a while to see any initial movement or momentum in the direction that we want to go. It can be very frustrating. It's often these activities that 
require the most patients to see all the benefits from. One example is the phenomenon of resonance breathing or even meditation, which might be more familiar with most of you. The effects it can have on regulating our nervous system for better stress management, reduced anxiety, and so much more they all come through repetitive practice. And even though you know at some point you will break through, it can be very, very frustrating at the start. And we often walk away before seeing it through and actually seeing our ROI, our return on investment in those practices. Have the patience to sit through exponential growth. It's worth it because actually it continues to pay increasing dividends the more and more you pour into it over your lifetime. It's the beautiful thing about mindfulness and personal development, all of these things that we dive into on this show. Now, logarithmic growth, on the other hand, is actually the inverse of exponential growth. It's the immediate beginner gains, quote unquote, that we like to say in the fitness world. It's why so often, honestly, when you're starting out, any fitness plan will get you results when you're a total newbie to working out in the first place. The critical thing to watch out for activities that fall into this category is knowing when to stick with that plan program moving forward and when to mix it up. That's why creating a system of continually checking back into this goal stack, which we're creating today together, is so critical for sustained growth in your life. What are you doing right now that isn't a set in forget activity? Okay. Don't set it today and then just let it collect dust in your parents' basement or never open it again on your notes app and your phone. We want to come back to this with increasing frequency and when done correctly and consistently, it's your map forward towards life as you want to be. You have a clear picture, hopefully now, of Q1 and onwards, right? What needs to happen this month, though, to put you a little bit closer to those benchmark goals? With the different growth patterns in mind, right? What areas of your life are you really locking into right now? What are you maybe reserving for a Q2, Q3, Q4 goal? Is it a time in your life to really dive into fitness? Or with what's going on in your family life, with maybe a recent move, transition, newborn, is it more beneficial to focus on another area? Be mindful of how much is on your plate and how much you can actually consume at once goes a long way in playing the overall life Tetris game, right? The setting of monthly goals really allows you to play that Tetris with way more skill and finesse than most people out there. So with respect to all these moving parts that we all have going on, we're all busy, right? We all have this a lot going on, as we like to say, but it helps to get a clear picture of what truly do we have and don't have space for. And peeling this onion back a little bit further, another layer, what needs to happen this week? that moves you towards that monthly goal. I'm talking maybe if you're listening to this on Friday when this is released, or maybe Monday as you're starting this week, what needs to happen? What area or areas of your life do you have space for right now to really dive and pour into that really keeps you in alignment with everything else that we've discussed so far? Making sure that it aligns all the way up the stack is crucial to staying the course, to getting to where you want to go. And then lastly, how about today? What is going to happen today that right when you're done watching and listening to this is something that you'll be able to do that will be in alignment with who you see yourself as. And when it comes to setting those daily goals, I recommend it to be a maximum of five things. Anything more than that, you're getting a little ahead of yourself. And while we like to think that we're being ambitious and doing so, you're really actually just self-sabotaging your brain setting yourself into failure and really sending your brain into hyperdrive when it should be in this more cruise control where you can press the gas when you need to and slow down when you need to. Peak performers know when to do which and implement and really plan their day accordingly. Writing down these three to five clear goals is going to be what is most important to set up that continued feedback loop. And last thing on goals, I would take a second to really set a daily intention that is in alignment with the goals for the day. I know this sounds a bit tedious, right? But it can be really helpful to have just one word to remember and to be a reminder to turn back through throughout the day that really sets the tone of what you're doing that day and how you want to show up. This intentional practice really helps you keep on track when you find yourself maybe getting a little bit distracted there. And it can be really the simple motivation push reminder that you might need to check off that last thing on the list when you're maybe not feeling like it towards the end of the day. Being in alignment is one of the most talked about habits of being successful, but it's often misunderstood how to actually follow through on. 
Goal stacking really is what allows to make sure your daily actions are in alignment with the person you ultimately want to be in this world. So take it seriously. Now that we have a goal stack from today all the way to the end of time, what do we do? How do we make sure that this doesn't collect us and we never see it again? We actually come back and use what we just did. Life is ever changing. It's fluid and shit happens. Let's just be real. And maybe you're at a point right now in your life where shit has totally hit the fan and you don't even know which way is up or how to get back on course of where you want to go. That's okay. Depending on what season you are in life, you might be having an easier or harder time seeing the light forward. What we're about to implement here will be the first step in doing just that. That's where this weekly scouting report comes into play for all of us. No matter where we're at or what season we're in, we can benefit from this weekly habit. This weekly routine will help you plan, it will help you pivot, and it will help you prioritize yourself above all else. And here's how it works, right? I want you to take back first by looking at your past week. Assess the progress towards your goal. Don't be afraid to be really critical and realistic. Did you set goals that actually made sense or were they all out of sorts? Were you all over the place? It's better to catch this now than again, five weeks, 10 weeks, 20 weeks into the year. Refer back to your goal stack that you just made as step number two in that weekly scouting report. This simple glance back, right, will provide you a boost in motivation and a significant bump in clarity in setting goals, number three, for the week ahead. What is that weekly goal going to be that moves you in alignment up that stack? Look at your calendar as you do this. Be realistic with what your expectations of yourself are in this process. We want to be challenging, but we don't want to be overwhelmed. And we don't want to be overwhelming to ourselves. Maybe you have some crazy travel plans coming up with work or a big deadline that's approaching. By keeping this information in mind, you can really be creating a more informed plan of action instead of just going about life willy-nilly with no plan at all. Put into your calendar everything that needs to happen to move you closer to that goal that you just set. This is the scouting portion. Plan out each day of your calendar for the week ahead. Things will come up, but trust me, this is worth doing. So I recommend doing this on Sunday. If you're sitting down there, I want you to plan out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday again. And then you'll create this habitual cycle, right? And once it's in there, again, you'll have a clearer picture of what exactly is going on or not going on. You can quite literally see what do you have space for and what do you not have space for in your life. Personally, I calendar everything, right? That's from meetings to workouts to deep work blocks to create content such as this. If it doesn't get calendared for me, it just doesn't get done in my life, at least. You might be thinking, this seems very rigid, Corey. This seems very strict. That's not matching my personality, but this is what allows me to stay adaptable and agile towards where I want to go when I want things to happen and get shit done. Just this morning, I had one client reschedule to another day this week, and I had another ask for a later time in the day. I was able to quickly shift within about 30 seconds the hour work blocks that I had in my calendar to accommodate both of these requests to keep them happy, but also more importantly, keep me on track in going towards where I want to go. Even in a client service business, we can still make sure we are hitting our personal goals while still meeting the client's needs. That is a huge takeaway for any coaches listening out there, teachers, givers, you can still prioritize yourself. It just requires you to be a little flexible in where do these things fall, right? So my two main focuses right now are going to be growing my business and marathon training for Austin next month. That's my main focus of Q1. I needed to make sure that I was still hitting my marathon training and still hitting the content creation that I need to hit, the numbers there, the outreach, all of that, right? Moving the needle forward. The last game-changing piece of feedback to the feedback system that I really want to introduce to you today is called your daily cool down. And this is the daily thing. This is actually what I'm doing as soon as we're done recording this because it's a little bit late on the West Coast right now. Every athlete knows the importance of a cool down, right? After a high quality session, it's what helps prime both your body and your mind to get back out there, to get back into training the next day. And that's the purpose and the intention of the daily cool down practice that we're about to go over. And here's how you can implement it today into your life. First, set a time in your calendar where you begin this routine. And I want you to set it on reoccurring repeat for every single day for the end of time. It's just, you're going to be a solid for me. It's 6 p.m. Pacific time. It goes about a 45 minute block and it's on repeat 
Monday to Monday, every single day. The first thing you're going to do in that time block every single day, you're going to clear your red. All emails of importance, the texts, the DMs, or however you're communicating these days should be cleared first. We want to tie up all those loose ends and get that nagging red number off of our screen. It doesn't look good anyway, right? And it alerts us. Not a good not a good thing for our overall nervous system health. Just trust me there. Number two, I want you to look back on what did you do today, right? Did you move yourself closer to that weekly goal? If you did not, that's okay. This is where number three comes in. What needs to happen tomorrow to keep you on track, to keep you on pace to where you want to go? Do you need to make some tweaks to that scouting report that you made on Sunday? Odds are by the time that you get to Wednesday, it looks a little bit different than what you planned for it to look like on Sunday. So make those tweaks in your calendar now, adjust accordingly, and you stay the course. And then lastly, this is the most important part of the power down. It's why it's called a cool down. Shut off the screens, all of them. I'm talking TV, I'm talking phone, I'm talking computer, Kindle, Apple Watch, all of it. You're now on Do Not Disturb. Your system is Do Not Disturb. Enjoy that time to yourself, recharge with your family, whatever that looks like, but turn the screens off, please. Powering down and holding these boundaries outlined above are going to be critical in providing you the ample feedback and time and space needed to crush those wildest dreams that you have. And with this freshly made minted goal stack of yours, the weekly scouting report and the daily cool down exercise, you'll truly step into becoming an unstoppable forever athlete. And if you want more episodes like this one, be sure to subscribe to the channel, right? Share with a friend or spread the word, share it with a teammate. We grow further together here at Forever Athlete. And I appreciate you joining me today. Until next time, flow on my friends.